This week on Crunch Week, we're talking about Bang with Friends, Yahoo's acquisition spree, and Clout getting into the Q&A space. Hey, welcome to Crunch Week. I'm Colleen Taylor. I'm Anthony Ha. And I'm Greg Comparic. So, what happened this week? Many things. Lots of things. Ten, tens of thousands of things. And we were also <laughs> gone last week, so yeah. I feel like it's been so long. Yeah. So many things to talk about. Yeah, Happy so to be back in San Francisco. Good to be back. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think one thing that happened is Bang with Friends launched on mobile. Everyone's really excited about that. Mostly, Which is really mostly the environment <laughs> that it's meant for, I would say. <laughs> yeah. It actually is because you know it's kind of more of a private thing, and people do private things on on their phones a little bit more often than on on laptops, just because laptops are on computers, then because they tend to be shared and browsing history and, and all that. Wait, but, let's back up for a second because what is Bang with Friends? Okay, so Bang with Friends is a service that launched back in January, I think, and it's a, a Facebook-centric service, and you, you sign in via Facebook, and it brings up all your friends, and each friend has a little Bang button next to them. <laughs> and you touch the Bang button, and then if your friend also happens to be using Bang with Friends and touches that little Bang button, it connects the dots and says, hey, you guys should hang out. And but if but if, uh, if neither or if like the, if there's not a connection, then no one knows. Like it, it doesn't reach, reach out proactively and say, "Hey, this person likes you." It's uh, it's it's only if there's a connection there. Okay. There was also kind of a scandal <laughs> this week, though, right? Like there was there was a bug or a or there's a website <laughs> that you can click and then you can see all of your friends who have signed up for Bang with Friends at least before January or something. Yeah. So there was a uh, as far as the the guys behind the service are saying, it was a pretty short lived bug. It was maybe it was around for two or three days, so it really only affected people that jumped on the service really quickly. There was just a bug in how they were setting the privacy settings. So if you follow a certain link, you can see which of your friends uh, used Bang with Friends like right off the bat. And there were really excited. <laughs> but there's a certain layer of deniability. We're like, I just, you know, I, I didn't see it as, you know, about banging or, you know, I just wanted to check it out, you know, because yeah. I'm just trying to try to check it out. I just wanted to see the, the, the user experience. The user experience. Right. Make, that's make right. Sure well, that's how design. it is, like, on, like, half, you know, like, when, like, these, like, dating apps, like, launch and you're just, like, half the people are like, I'm just here to, like, you know, check it out. And you're like, great, cool. Well, thanks. Yeah. But it, it works. It's plausible deniability because a lot of these right. apps actually have really good design, like Tinder or whatever it is. That's, right. It's a pretty app. Right. Yeah. What I want to know is, because you've, you've talked to these founders of Bang With Friends, yeah. so what is the what are the stats? How many people are actually in real life hooking up as a result of this app? Because when I click on the link to see who of my friends is actually using Bang With Friends, it just seems to be a lot of tech reporters and maybe people who were curious. Yeah, for sure. So uh, apparently about a million people have signed up. I don't know how many of them are active, and I think that's kind of important, but it's not really a service that you're going to be using every day. You're like, oh, I, I do want to bang them. Let me go back and log in. Uh, it's, it's one of those services that you set it, you forget it, and then eventually you hope that you know, there's a connection. I'm doing, again, a connection there somewhere. Uh, but So there's a million users or so, and they've made 200,000 connections. Uh, so do you whatever. think that Bang With Friends is like a novelty that's going like, to disappear in a couple months, or do you think it's going to become like, a real company? I think it'll kind of change into something more serious. I think they'll uh, turn into like a, a broader, like a, a more of a broad service than just banging. But <laughs> <laughs> banging can be pretty broad. Wow, we're being super mature right now. Well, this is it's kind of a hard topic to they be. Use, I mean, yeah. you know, it's it's so straightforward. It's not like yeah. oh, like dinner with friends, like yeah. date with friends. It's like but getting it, straight to the point. In the mobile app, they did introduce. Uh, Instead of just, so there's always been the down to bang button, but now there's also a up to hang button. Ah. So with people that you just want to, uh, you want to keep in the friend zone, you can, you can hit the up to hang button. And that's, one of the, that's an example of them trying to be a little bit more broad. But at the same time, it kind of like deviates from the original topic. It's like, I already know which of my friends I want to hang out with. And they already know because right. I, I hang out with them. <laughs> right. I don't need to like have this like secret, you know, <laughs> furtive kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> bang with friends, big thing. Another big thing this week has been M&A, acquisitions. I mean, this is serious stuff. Just yeah. Thursday, how many- It was others? acquisition day. It was Yahoo's a just spring. going crazy. <laughs> Yahoo went crazy. Yahoo uh, announced two acquisitions before it was even 9 o'clock Pacific time. And then Friday, they've also announced a new uh, acquisition. Now, all, all of these are kind of aqua hire situations. Right. Yeah, because they actually, the part of the, the way that the news about today's acquisition got out is they tweeted, oh, we, uh, we've added 22 engineers to our, to our mobile team, and then it listed four companies, one of which had not been announced yet. Right. So, um, yeah, it, it was, uh, I think, you know, so 22 people spread across four companies. So these are relatively small deals, and, and I think in most cases the technology is, uh, you know, is, isn't coming over. It's really just about growing their, their mobile team. Yeah. 
Yeah, Josh Constein wrote an amazing post. I think it's a really great post yeah. on Thursday called uh, "As Tech Giants Scramble for Talent, It's Buy or Die." And I really liked his slug, like the URL. It says, mm. "Because the best never apply." <laughs> and I think this is true when it comes to at least engineers. I mean, you know, these guys and girls are starting startups, or maybe they apply to a few select. You know, maybe they'll apply for a job at Facebook or at Twitter or Google, but they're not going to necessarily apply for a job at Salesforce or at Yahoo yet. So, you know, this is the right. way that they're getting engineers. Yeah, yeah, I think, well, I also liked uh, what, what Daryl Etherington, uh, he, he didn't post this on the site, but he did say this in our chat room that uh, after today's news, he said, well, this isn't, this isn't an acquisition, it's a job fair. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. He should have posted that he on the posted site. That. Yeah. He should at least tweet it. <clears throat> we should be putting more of our internal chat messages on the site. <laughs> but, um, but so far, they've grabbed Stamped, Snippet, Astrid, Jibe, On the Air, and today, or yesterday was Milewise and Go Pull Go, Go, Pull, Pull, Go. Go. Yeah. and then today was Loki. Loki Studios, yeah. It's just nonstop. Yeah, I and mean, I mean, you know, I think it is, you know, part of like, like, you know, I think Marissa Meyer said that that the, her focus with Yahoo, you know, especially for those first few months, was really just all about talent, and yeah. so, you know, this seems like a pretty natural extension of that. Yeah, I'd be interested to know, and this is something that I'd like to follow up on. You know, how exactly are they integrating all of these folks? I mean, a lot of these companies, Twitter has acquired a lot of. Uh, small startups, and that's been a way that they've integrated talent. But then you hear so often about acquisitions not going so well, um, and right. the people who were acquired just kind of resting, investing after they get on board at the big company, and then leaving as soon as their 18 months is up or whatever. And so, how are they making sure that all of these people are wanting to stick around, working together as a team? There's no resentment from the existing Yahoo staffers who didn't just get a one million dollar payout, you know, right. for their jobs. So, it's it's tricky, but but I mean, they're definitely ambitious with it. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I definitely have those conversations with people after they get acquired. Sometimes I'm like, okay, oh, cool. what, what are you doing? And then like, if it doesn't seem like they really have a lot of responsibility or doing anything super interesting, then you're, you immediately think and sometimes say, like, okay, so when are you actually leaving? Right, but maybe they can get a little bit of good work out of them. Or maybe they're, they're gonna have a lot of fun at Yahoo and, and build cool things. I think that's the hope. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but definitely an exciting time to have a startup yeah. and you know, be courting all these offers. Yeah. Uh, what else? So I think we, uh, the third piece of news we wanted to talk about was Clout, um, a, a startup that I think everyone kind of likes to complain about. <laughs> um, and uh, although, you know, everyone, I think everyone's sort of aware of their Clout score, right? Like, for example, I, I did look earlier and, and I saw that I have, you know, like 10 points higher than either of you. But, I mean, that's not a big deal or anything. <laughs> mine is not actually, a big deal. Mine wait, is seven, 7 billion is my Cloud score. <laughs> wait, what, did you really just look? I, I did look. <laughs> what are our Cloud scores? What's I think one score? of you, you were both in the low 60s. Ooh, is that bad? In the low 70s. MG's like at 80. Or, yeah. How, what's the highest? 100? Yeah, 100. Okay. Bieber okay. is 100. I'm in the low 60s? Well, you haven't connected your face. This, this is how they get you is that um, you have to connect different social networks to it and then they'll start measuring it. And they'll add, and that'll, you know, if you add Facebook, your score will go up. Oh. So, like, I, ac I accidentally dis disconnected Facebook for a little while and my score went down and then I had to reconnect it. Not that I pay attention to such things. Okay. Well, I'll be, I'll be doing that. Anyway, so that's, that's, that's the sort of ongoing <laughs> Clout. But so, so the, the news this week was that um, they announced a feature called Clout Experts, um, which is basically the idea that they're, you know, You've got your overall cloud score, but also that they're trying to track your influence in specific topics. And so if you're influential about tech, say, then you might log into cloud and, um, and then, you know, they'll ask you a question, like a fact-based question, like what's your, you know, what do you think is, well, sort of fact, you know, at least something that's like fairly simple. So it's like what, you know, what is like your like favorite phone or something like that. Um, and then you get 300 characters to, uh, to answer the question, which is then, um, you know, both posted on the Clout site and then also surfaced on Bing um, because they have a partnership with Bing. And then does Clout evaluate, you know, how good your answer so was? So the way, then... yeah, the way it works right now is I think it's basically a human editors kind of going through all the answers and choosing the ones that they like the best, which this is... Isn't, I already graduated from college. This <laughs> is insane. Like... So the way, and then the way they want to do it eventually is sort of make it more kind of like this, like, like uh, the readers, like, well, but you can only, you can only vote on whether an answer is good if you yourself are influential on the topic. So I can't go into like you know like the like home improvement section and start like voting this is a great answer <laughs> right. um, it has to be somebody who actually claims to know about that or you know has some evidence for that but I don't yeah know. I've been to your house your house is beautiful <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's true, true. Bob Vila um, <laughs> I don't remember you being there so that's kind of creepy that's good good <laughs> but it's interesting I think so I mean it's kind of weird I think a lot of people are like why is clout doing this um, mm. 
And I think one of the arguments that, that, that Joe Fernandez, the, the co-founder and CEO, made to me is, you know, what we've done now is we've basically built the platform, and that platform is, is reputation, and now we can build other applications on top of the reputation system. Hmm. So you can sort of start to expect to see more kind of things from clout that use reputation but aren't just about measuring the reputation. I could see it being addictive in the same way that people are addicted to finding out their clout score. Like, right. obviously, I personally am not super up on it, but I know a lot of people who they joke about it, but they also are very self conscious about their clout scores right. and they actively try and game it. And I mean, it's a game and, and it could be addictive. It's yeah. a kind of a smart partnership for both of them. Uh, it's good for Bing just because it's a good way for them to differentiate from Google. Because a lot of the times when you type a question into Google, it surfaces Yahoo answers, which aren't necessarily the best answers, but right. there's, there's content there. Right. Uh, so for, for Bing to be jumping on this, like it's at least theoretically them being able to say, look, we have a really good answer from people who know what they're doing. And Cloud's like, our scores mean something now. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think that that's definitely, it seems like that's something that Bing has, has definitely been doing over the past couple of years is really trying to build relationships with other companies so that they can, you know, surface things that, that Google wouldn't, you know, just through, you know, purely algorithmically. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, I still don't use Bing that much, but it seems like a smart strategy at least. Right. Yeah, cloud, it's, it's good to see Cloud is still, you know, around and <laughs> You know, because like you said, they've, they've come under a lot of criticism. A lot of people, you know, haven't liked it. And when scores change quickly as they change their algorithms, there's been a lot of criticism of Cloud. But right. they're still around. And right. And I mean, I do think that actually, you know, that the criticism isn't necessary. I mean, there's some stuff where it's like privacy related where I think that's a real problem for the company. But I think... In some ways, I mean, any reputation system, you're just going to have a lot of people complaining about it. So, I mean, if, given what they would do, the fact that everyone's complaining about it is, you know, arguably a good thing. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's about it for, for this week. I hope you all have a nice weekend and uh, check back with us next week for yet another Crunch Week.